Then we move to Greg Clark, now the former head of the FA. Uh, let's have a look at the evidence. Let's look at the rap sheet. So I'm looking at the headlines and all the Twitter. What's he? T- he must be must be KKK membership going on here. Surely he was on Eugene's Christmas card list. This man must have been organising race riots around... Oh, hang on. It's none of those things. He made a mistake. Uh, We're back in that territory again. Should Greg Clark have resigned? 0344 499 1000. So this is the FA chairman who told MPs I've spent... This is how it all panned out. We'll play you the clip again in a second, Okay. Uh, He said, I've spent a lot of time talking to people from the LGBT community, people from other sports that have come out. And the views that I've heard is that if I look at what's happened to high profile footballers, high profile coloured footballers, it is that offensive word. And the abuse they have taken on social media. Don't take my word for it. Here's the man himself telling MPs this very thing only yesterday. If I look at what happens to high-profile female footballers, high-profile coloured footballers, and the abuse they take on social media. It's the word coloured, which is outdated and it's offensive, and we're not going to debate that side of it. We will debate whether somebody loses their career as a result of the accidental use of it. Now, I say accidental use. I mean, there's going to be people, and I looked at had a, a couple of exchanges before I just gave up on social media from people saying um, that, you know, this is <laughs> this man knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly what he was doing. Get out of here. Get in the seat. This isn't a fella that knew what he was doing. This was a man talking about racism. He said throughout the very same appearance of the select committee, he said people can see that if you're black and they don't like black people because they are filthy racists, they can abuse you anonymously online. He was talking against racism. He was talking up for the abuse that players get. He was highlighting the very cause. So the mere idea that he thought he'd slip in a deliberate racial no-no in the middle of it all would just be absolutely bonkers. He was asked by Labour MP Kevin Brennan whether he'd like to withdraw the comment given that the committee's meeting, uh, on, given the discussion of the committee's meeting. And he immediately apologised. He said, if I said it, if I said that, I deeply didn't even realise he'd said it. If I said it, I deeply apologise. I am a product of having worked overseas. I worked in the US for many years. I was required to use the term people of colour because that was the product of their diversity legislation and positive discrimination format. But following pressure from charities and sports stars around the world, the FA announced last evening of his exit. Writing on Twitter, we can confirm that Greg Clark has stepped down from his role as chairman. Peter McCormick will step into the role as interim FA chairman with immediate effect and the FA board will begin the process of identifying a new appointing a new appointee in due course uh, you know it's not going to be an old white bloke that gets that gig right 0344 499 1000 it's just the it look it's a term nobody uses and people debate well, what the, the word colored versus the word people of color I know there's uh, perhaps a confusion there. I'm sure somebody can call me and enlighten everybody uh, as, as to what that uh, subtle, but I'm told, crucial distinction is. But I think we all know, most of us know, uh, that that isn't a term that is acceptable. And it has, you know, some connotations and history to it. And it's been used in a fairly dismissive, um, generalised sense, perhaps in order to describe an entire group of people. Maybe it's that. So I get it. That That's not in dispute. What, what is in dispute as to why somebody has to go when they cross that line accidentally? And that's and I can think of myriad areas, uh, particularly in the world of football. You know, footballers who've killed people and gone back to playing. Footballers who've been caught out on the source, people who've been caught out doing all manner of things, assault, you name it, who've gone back to the football. But this was a guy that accidentally used the wrong word, for goodness sake. And he's gone. He's paid with his career. 0344 499 1000. In the interest of absolute balance, because I think most people, most, I think most sane people will look at this and say, this is ridiculous. Look. This guy had, he'd used those terms. There was an area where he talked about sexuality and he talked about football players who were gay. And if that's their choice, I think he said something like that. 
Um, there's some contention as to whether he was talking about whether it was their choice to come out or whether it was their choice to be gay. But again, that's been thrown at him. He made a comment about girls uh, in football not liking balls being kicked at them, which might be as a percentage disproportionately true. Or I have no idea. The point is he's paid with his career. He ain't going to starve, by the way. This bloke is worth a few quid. That isn't the point either. The point is whether we... We castigate people to the level of removing their livelihood because they accidentally misspeak. As distinct from your mad, bad racist, the aforementioned Eugene Terre Blanche and Mr. Le Pen and the like. Come on. Can we all grow up on this? This is not the world we want to live in, is it? Do you teach your kids that? And here's how life's going to work, kids. If you make a mistake in life, nobody will ever forgive you. And you will lose, rightly so, lose your entire career for the rest of time. Is that... Come on. We actually teach kids the very opposite, don't we? We talk about a re-education. People are saying, well, he's beyond re-education. Now, he's acknowledged what he said. He's not standing there today saying, I have no idea what I said. He knows what he said. And he gave a, a completely reasonable response when he said, well, you know, I worked in the States and the term people of colour. Amber Rudd fell in a, a, a very similar kind of trap when she was scrambling. You could hear her brain. It also, by a, an unsavoury or a savoury coincidence, uh, on a debate, I think, about uh, race of some sort or women of colour in certain professions or lacking in certain professions. And she used the word coloured on a radio interview. And she clearly didn't mean, I think she was meant to say colour and it all came out wrong. And again, the Twitterati, the Wokerati and everyone who hasn't got anything better to do, frankly, were up in arms. I'm surprised there wasn't a riot in Whitehall. Amber Rudd. Not just a racist, but a Tory racist. Utter scum. This is the world people inhabit. Man, whatever happens to making a mistake? 0344 499 Darren Bent, Anton Ferdinand, you name it, have all come out. Ferdinand said, he's former West Ham, of course, clearly needs education on all levels. Darren Bent, slip of the tongue, was it awful? Just awful. I get that. But even Julian Knight, the Tory MP, head of the committee where these words were said, said, isn't it right that Greg Clark apologised before the committee? However, it's right that he apologised. However, uh, this isn't the first time the FA have come to grief over these issues. It makes us question their commitment to di diversity. I thought Julian Knight's best comment came at the very end after this was all, all happened. And he just turned to Mr. Clark and said, don't Google yourself. <laughs> it's a cracking piece of advice. <laughs> Love it. I'm not bothered, by the way. Um, I mean, we hear about, you know, the fact that these jobs are all filled with old white men. I mean, it makes sense that if you started your career in the late 60s or the 1970s, by the time that you get to the year 2020, and bearing in mind, in the late 60s, early 70s, there was about 1% of the population were non-white. It makes sense that now we'd be in a stage where all of those people have reached the tops of their careers. They're bound to be lots of white people in a mostly white country that was nearly all white back then in those positions. That's not a, a that, that's a no brainer. It's very easy to work out why that would be. I, I'm more intrigued by the establishment. I mean, these people hop from, have you seen it? They hop from one committee to another. No one ever questions whether they got the right credentials. Oh, look, I used to run something. Can I have a job? Of course, they trouser handsome six figure salaries along the way. Nice bank balances. Dido Harding, Kate Bingham from the Vaccine Task Force. These kind of people. They just get these gigs. I don't know how it works. Uh, let's speak with David Davis, uh, FA, former FA chief executive. And John Barnes, uh, former Liverpool, former England, of course. John, David, afternoon to you both. Um, I mean, John, first of all, let's cut to the chase. Should he have resigned? Well, if, it's completely up to him whether he should resign or not. Now, um, he has made lots of uh, un unfortunate comments in the past, and he made some more unfortunate comments. But of course, if you just talk about the fact that he called, that he said coloured, I don't think that he should resign just for saying coloured. Now, obviously, there are other incidents that happened before um, that I don't necessarily agree with with what he did. I don't agree with a lot of the things he's done in the past. I don't necessarily think he's the right man for the job in terms of understanding about inclusion and diversity, if that's what one of the criteria for the job is. But if we're just saying because he said coloured, he should resign, I don't think that that's the case. Okay. And I don't think he resigned just because he said coloured. Yeah. Was, was he good at the job as far as you could ascertain? I mean, it, it, I don't it, know what it, the job entails. It's, it's, yeah. if, if you're talking about a job entailing understanding diversity and inclusion, no, he's not. But I don't think that's what the job is about.
necessarily. That's obviously a part of the job. But, Is it a big part of the job? We don't know. But the whole the whole diversity and inclusion thing. I mean, there's a whole bunch of mine, mines buried in the field in front of you, isn't there? In any of those kind of big gigs, and it's very easy to step on one. Yes, and of course, you know, being the chairman of a of, of, of or, or being the head of any major institution, um, that obviously is a more of a modern role in terms of understanding inclusion and diversity. I suppose ten years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, that wasn't a criteria to being a head of a big institution. But of course, it is now. So under those circumstances, then questions have to be asked. But if you're asking me whether I think he should have resigned because he said coloured players, when well, two seconds later he said that black players weren't appreciated and they should be supported, and he's trying to help black players by talking about yeah. social media being horrible towards them. It seems as if he's trying to be supported as far as he's concerned. But of course, the language that he used was unacceptable to some people. Yeah, I, I'm hearing a lot of people, John, say, you know, this is all about kind of the old white man syndrome. There's too many of them around and this is the kind of problems we're going to get. What, what, as a black man, what do you say to that? Well, if you look at the higher echelons of any institution, not just in the SA, in any institutions, you are going to get old white men over 50. That's a fact. And as to whether, you know, um, thinking about their pers- perspectives on other, on, on other groups of people or the perspectives on, on, on modern terminology, modern language, they're not going to be as au fait with, with what goes on today as, as younger people. So he isn't, he isn't unique in, in what he actually says. But, of course, being f- uh, involved in football, whereby football is very high profile, mm. or the police, um, they're the ones who are going to be criticised. But this is a problem in society, not just in football. Uh, let's speak with David Davis as well. Uh, David, afternoon to you, former uh, exec, uh, chief exec, of course, of the FA. You know the place well. Uh, you, you know the kind of agendas that come across the desk in that job. Was this, was this a live issue back then when you were at the helm? Well, let's put it like this. Speaking as an older white man, uh, which I'm bowed to say, <laughs> um, I think John put his finger on it when he said... Well, of course, there have been these problems in the past with the now former former chairman. Um, But my take on it is whoever, whoever becomes, it was chairman, is chairman of the FA, the reality is that the structure of the governance of the game is completely from a different age. And before somebody says, and, um, you know, of course, they're right to say, well, if you were so clever, why didn't you do something about it when you were there with your friend David Bernstein, another former chairman who had to step down when he reached a certain age? The truth was we did. And, we, we, you know, I was on a task force back in uh, 1997, 98, uh, which came up with the need for an independent regulator from outside football to change football. And that's what some of us passionately believe in. I also happen to have gone to number 10 Downing Street in the year 2000 with the then chief executive Adam Crozier Mm. and to say very clearly that that's what we believed in. John was also right from the start when he was still a player was hugely supportive of something I'm proud to have been a founder member of the Kick It Out campaign which had success has had success but some of us believe has reached a point now where it needs new ideas and new ways going forward. Yeah, John, and John, just to go back, I mean, David there just you know, brilliantly singing, <clears throat> singing your praises on a number of issues there, and, and, and it's true. I mean, you were talking about racism in football before probably anybody that I can remember really kind of advanced this argument. And in terms of black representation in football, there's no problem there. I mean, that's that's that box kind of, you know, doesn't need to be ticked. It shouldn't be about a box. There's, you know, there, there are black football players and lots of black football players. But to you, your contention is that the structure around it is what needs changing. Would that be fair? Well, if you look at the lack of black managers, which is very obvious, that is obviously an issue. Now, that comes from the fact that it's okay to accept players as physically equal, but are we going to be intellectually and morally equal? And that's a problem in society because are there many black managers in the high echelons of any industry? But once again, we're absolving the rest of society of responsibility to look at itself by just saying it's a problem in football. You can go into the high echelons of any industry and you're not going to get black representations. Why are we pretending it's just football? But lots of people and could argue people, that. I mean, that, that's just yeah. the way it is, John. Isn't it? I said at the beginning of, of the programme that if you, you know, if you were in a country back in, I don't know, the late 60s, the early 70s, when yeah. probably 1% of the country then was non-white, then yeah. people, those people were carving out their careers. Fast forward mm-hmm. to 
2020. They're all now sitting in the tops, top jobs in their careers. It just, as sure as night follows day, most of them are going to be white. The top jobs in the footballer's career is being a footballer, not being a football manager, because football is about physical ability. Management is about intellectual True. ability. But I'm talking about so general all, institutions that exactly, you alluded to. Exactly. Also, but there are not many institutions that have black people at the top of those institutions. Very much so football is no different. But we're trying to pretend that it's a problem in football because there aren't black people at the top of institutions in football, but there are black people at the top of other institutions. Where are the black people at the top of any institution? There aren't any. Yeah. Well, where are the working no class difference. people at the top of those institutions? Exactly. I mean, that's, exactly. So there aren't any either. I would, I would agree, also, I would agree with that. There is a sort of an establishment sort of sense to things. And on, on that point, David Davis, I mean, is that, you know, you often look at characters. I was looking at, you know, the... the, the uh, 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 Greg Clark's sort of backstory he worked in for cable and wireless. In uh, he has all sorts of business interests elsewhere. I mean, what would have happened at his interview? Do you imagine David Davis when he said, "I'm the man that should run British football"? Well, I mean, Greg Greg came through uh, was chairman of Leicester City for a period, chairman of the Football League for a period. But it, it's a it's a perfectly valid question to ask: How do uh, chairman uh, come through to become chairman. Yeah, I wonder about this all the time. And, I wonder about it in so many areas. So in, this is the area you know. I mean, what, what do you think happens when he got his CV out? And they said, well, where's your football experience? Where? Well, the, 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 I don't think anybody would say that to be a successful chairman of a club, you necessarily have to have been the best player uh, in the world. Having said that, the absence of players like John Barnes, if, if he'll excuse the flattery, uh, in, in our game. And the fact it's not just, of course, in the, in the manager's office or the coach's office, it's in the boardrooms, etc., etc. those sort of things. And it's, it, John's totally right. It is not just football's problem. Uh, it's all over uh, in all sorts of our other industries. The problem for football is the profile of football is now so high, yeah. unbelievably high, uh, f that football ha should be taking the lead in these matters. And that's why the, 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 government's, the, the, the governance of the game is failing the game at every level. And until and unless that's changed, I don't want the government to run football. What some of us want is Parliament to help football reform itself. And that can only be done by, we believe, by an independent regulator set up by Parliament, much the same as you have in, for example, the energy industry. Okay. That's the level of football today. F final question to both of you, David Davis, firstly. Uh, who, who should now get the big chairman huh. job? Does, I don't mean necessarily a specific name, but does it now have to be a non-white male or a female? Have they now got to do that to make that symbolic change? Not necessarily. It has to be the best person who ultimately is considered for the job. But it wouldn't matter if you, with, with respect to the late Mother Teresa, if you found, or, the, or Albert Einstein, if you found any of these people, if you go on with a, the, this way of governing, oh, by the way, it's taken eight months to try to find a short-term solution for some of the clubs, and they still haven't found that, uh, in this COVID generation, until and unless you change the governance of the game, any chairman from wherever will struggle. And John Barnes, similarly, uh, does it have to do, do the FA now have to do something symbolic to show change? Does that mean that, it, that the next chairman has to be or the next chair has to be a woman or a non-white male? So do you, if, uh, if it's a non-white male or a woman, would that change the perception that people generally have of a, of, of a non-white person or woman? Or would they elevate that person out of that position that they're in and say, yes, they're OK, but other non-white people or women aren't? It's not a question of giving the job to a black man or a woman, because we have to change the perception of the average black person or the average woman and their capabilities. Obama was the president of the United States. Have anything changed for black people? Frank Reichardt won the Champions League as a black manager. Are there any more black managers because of that? That's going to change nothing. We have to change the perception 
of black people, women and gays generally before anything changes. John, great to have you on as ever. Thank you, John Barnes, former Liverpool, former England player, David Davis, former FA chief executive with us here on Talk Radio. Just a cracking debate this, isn't it? Eh? 0344-499-1000. Where do we go with this one? I mean, there's a couple of issues there. I mean, this is widened out as the guys there have, okay, I think, articulated in some of their answers into the other areas of life and issues and industries. Uh, back to the original question. Greg Clark, did he need to resign? Did he need to resign because of those specific words? Did he need to resign because he stands for something that's a bit old and stale and you need new blood in there? Someone who's more contemporary, more understanding of modern issues and what diversity means, etc. 0344 499 1000. You're listening to Ian Collins on Talk Radio.